Good evening, good evening. Let's stand in the house of the Lord. You know, sometimes you get a song on your mind or on your heart, and you just it just goes over and over and over. I kept thinking about that little song, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Are you glad to be here tonight? Let's give the Lord praise. Put our hands together and praise Him. Sister Ellen's going to lead us. Amen.
tonight, but I'm sure that uh, every one of us have a need, uh, right? Praise God. But we know the one that has all the answers. Amen. Hallelujah. Is there anybody who has an outspoken prayer request tonight? Amen, brother. Amen. Anybody else? Let's yes, remember, continue me here, Zach Martin and Sister Shirley Berry and others that's uh, going through some really serious battles. You know, you mentioned the, the name, any disease, any name, any name thing. His name is above every sickness, every disease, every stronghold, every principality, every power. Today at home, I felt overwhelmed. And all I knew to do was just say, Jesus. And I'm going to tell you what, it won't but a few minutes. That, that cloud lifted. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. Our hope and our trust is in him. Let's go together to the Lord in prayer tonight. Trust and believe in these needs. Let's specifically remember Brother Fred's grandbaby. Amen. Father, we just ask you tonight, Jesus, to touch and minister each and every one of these needs, God. Lord God, touch Brother Fred's grandbaby, Lord God. Lord Jesus, Lord God, we speak against diabetes and sickness, Lord God, tonight. Oh, hallelujah, Lord God. You took those stripes from your body, Lord God, that we could be healed, Lord God. I thank you for every time you've healed me and you've brought me through, Lord. Others here can testify, Lord God, of your healing power and your mercy and your grace, God. Lord, our trust and our hope is in you, Jesus. So bless and minister each and every one here tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And we want to go ahead and receive the offering while you're standing tonight. So if you would have a gift to bring to the Lord, an offering tonight, if you would, just come on. And I uh, am blessed the Lord. And let's worship together in the rest of this service. Amen. Amen. If you would stand one last time. Sister Ellen we're, has picked out, we're going to sing out with whose report will you believe. Brother, and before we do that, Brother Gary's not here tonight. He's visiting with his brother. So Brother Craig is going to be bringing us the word of God. Amen. Let's give him a hand of encouragement. Amen. We all know him. He's not a stranger, but he wants us to worship the Lord with him. But he'll be coming up to bring the word of God tonight. But let's sing. Whose report will you believe? We'll believe the report of the Lord. Amen. Whose report will you
Praise God. Y'all were kind of quiet there. I was standing back there while they were playing that song. I was trying to scoot over so the projector wasn't in my face, but I was kind of getting worried the way Walker was beating on them drums, <laughs> thinking if one of those sticks comes off and hits me, we're going to be in trouble. <laughs> Praise God. But it's good to see somebody that's passionate about what they're doing. He's played his drums. He's leaving. <laughs> I'm joking. <laughs> um, praise God. We're going to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 14. Begin reading with verse number 15. Matthew, chapter 14. Begin with verse number 15. And the scripture says, And when it was evening, his disciples came to him, saying, This is a desert place. And the time is now past. Send the multitude away that they may go into the villages and buy for themselves victuals. But Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them to eat. And they said unto him, We have here but five loaves and two fishes. And he said, Bring them hither to me. And he commanded the multitude to sit down on the grass and took the five loaves and the two fishes and looked up to heaven. He blessed and brake and gave the loaves to his disciples and the disciples to the multitude. And they did all eat and were filled. And when they took up the fragments that remained, twelve basketfuls, and they that had eaten were about 5,000 men besides the women and children. And tonight I want to talk for just a few moments from that scripture simply on using what you have. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we love you tonight, Father. God, we worship your name. We bless you tonight, God. We thank you, Lord, that we've gathered in this place to lift your name up, and we know, God, that you are here with us, Lord, because your word tells us where two or three are gathered, you would be with us, God. And, Lord, there's people that have needs in this building tonight. Lord, there are people that are here tonight, God, their hearts are heavy, they're, they're carrying burdens, and I pray tonight that when they leave this place, God, that you will, that you will give them a visitation of your spirit, God, that they can leave this place knowing that you are in control, knowing that you are able to meet every need, knowing that you're able to give strength to whatever they're dealing with, Father. In Jesus' name, we pray that your will will be done. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. In this passage of Scripture that we've read, you see there is a lesson that each one of us need to grasp a hold of. And it's very simple. It's just using what you have. You see, those disciples, they had something that to them seemed very insignificant. But when it was given to Jesus, it was something that met the need of everybody in that crowd. And each one of us, 
There are gifts and talents and things that are, that are inside of us that, that we feel like are insignificant. We feel like sometimes that, you know, I look at different preachers. Brother Adam Folgem, he can come through here, he can play, he can sing, he can preach. And I sit there and I'm like, Lord, I can't do all that. But, you know, we're not to compare ourselves with each other. I mean, sure, there's been times that I've prayed and I'm like, Lord, I want to learn how to play the piano. Just give me the ability to sit down and play like Sister Ellen. And I walk over there to the piano and I hit the keys and it does not sound like Sister Ellen. You know, I, I wish that would happen, but it doesn't. But there's things that are inside of me that may not be inside of Sister Ellen. So we can't compare ourselves and say, well, she's more important than, than I am or I'm more important than she is. We're, each one of us have something that God has given us the ability to bless others with. And, you know, that, that's the biggest thing. We've got to learn to be willing to bless somebody with what God has given us. I mean, sometimes people don't need to sit down and discuss, you know, how the rapture is going to take place. Sometimes people just need somebody to sit down beside them and just hug them and just show them some love and compassion. You know, and that's something each one of us can do. But in this, in this scripture, these, these disciples, you know, they're, they're there that Jesus has talked and he's trying to go away to a quiet place and this multitude of people follow him. And, and they get there, and the disciples are questioning. They're saying, you know, what, what are we going to do with all these people? We need to send them away. And Jesus looks at them, and, I mean, he really doesn't say this, but I believe he's looking at them, he's questioning them, and he's saying, what do you have? You know, you're telling me we need to send these people away. Why, why can't you feed them? Why, why can't you help them? And the disciples, they look at Jesus and they're just saying, oh, well, well, this is all we have. We've only got five loaves and two fishes. And, you know, they're looking at the crowd. You know, when you're looking at 5,000 men plus the women and children, and all you have is five loaves and two fishes, common sense begins to kick in. And you're looking and you're saying, well, this is not going to work. But you see, when you put Jesus, when you give what you have to Jesus, he can break it and do so much more with it than what you ever dreamed was possible. Because those disciples, they, they did not realize or maybe they just didn't comprehend that the one they were talking to just spoke a word and created this universe. He, he just began, he took that little bit of dirt and made each one of us. They, they were talking to the creator. They were, they were telling the sustainer of our life. We don't have enough. We, don't, we can't meet their need. And he's looking at them and he's saying, but you can. And so many times the church has that same opinion. You know, there's a world outside of our walls. They need this gospel that we have. And we as a church, we have to find some way to let this community know that Jesus saves. I, I believe that on Judgment Day we'll give an answer for what we do and what we don't do. It, it's a sobering thought. But how dare us come sit in the church Sunday after Sunday and Wednesday after Wednesday and you know just go through our religious stuff while we sit here and our neighbors are dying and going to hell, they're, they're waiting for somebody that can come by and offer them hope that this world is not all that there is. We need to let them know that there's a God that will save them, that there's a heaven that they can go to, that they don't have to be bound and tormented like they are. And my God, what is the church doing? But Jesus told him, he said, you've got to use what you have. He, he didn't tell them, go borrow from somebody. Use what you've got. 
Use your ability to meet somebody's need. In 1 Kings chapter 17, there was a widow. She, had, she was there and she had just a little meal. She was out gathering some sticks and the prophet comes by and he tells her, you know, go make me a cake. And she, she begins this conversation with him and she says, well, I've just got just enough meal that I can fix something for me and my child. We're going to fix this, we're going to eat, and then we're going to starve to death because I have nothing else. And, of course, you know, just like the preacher, he's saying, well, give what you have to me first. You know, the, the church is always wanting to be first with everything. Now, y'all know it's the truth. We, we've got to put God first in everything that we do. I mean, that, that includes with our finances. With, with everything that we do, we've got to put God number one. And so this widow, she's there, and in her mind, she's thinking, well, she's got two options. She can make him something, and in her natural mind, she's thinking, I can make him something, and then me and my child will die. But she had faith in what the man of God was telling her. She knew that God was going to meet her need. So she goes in and she makes for him first and, and God just miraculously meets her needs. Every time she went, there was enough in there for, to feed them. My God, all because she used what she had, she gave it to God. Then over in 2 Kings chapter 4, you see the widow, she just has a little cruise of oil. The, the, um, the men come along, the debt collectors. Her husband is dead. She has no income. And they've come by and they're going to take her children away from her. And she, she goes to the man of God and she says, what am I going to do? And he looks at her and he says, well, what do you have? She said, all I've got is just a little bit of oil left. And I, that, that's all I've got that's worth anything. And so he tells her to go and get the other vessels and to go in, close the door, and just pour. Because she gave what she had, God met her need. We, we've got to understand that we can't be stingy. That we've, we've got to use the thing that God has given us. You, so, you see, so many times we come up with so many excuses of why we can't use what we have. We come up, you know, so many, there are people, we just, we get worried, we get stressed, we, get, we let fear grip a hold of us. But they came to Jesus with excuses. And in verse number 15, their first excuse said, this is a desert place. They didn't pray about it. They, they didn't debate it amongst themselves. They just gave up. They, they looked at the situation and they said, there's no hope. And so many of us are guilty of the same thing. When life gets hard, when pressures come, it's so much easier to throw in the towel and say, you know what? I've had all of this I can take. I'm, I'm done with it. But it takes a strong person to look and say, you know what? God has brought me through so much before. Just begin to look back over your life at the times that God has blessed you, at the times that God has spared you, at the times that God has delivered you when, when you didn't deserve to be delivered. but they came up with all the excuses. And <clears throat> you see, that, that's exactly what the enemy wants us to do. He wants us to, to just sit there and not use what we have because he understands that if, if we give what we have to God, he knows God's going to bless it and God's going to be glorified. And the enemy does not want us doing anything to glorify God. But then their next excuse was it's too late. 
You know, he, he looked at them, and, or he, they're looking at Jesus, and they're saying, it, you know, it's getting dark. The people need to go home. And I, as you sit there and look at that scripture, there's, there's a lot more older people in here than there are younger people tonight. So right now I'm talking to the old people. You'll have to ask yourself if you fit in that category. But just because you're old, don't count yourself out. You may have some health issues. You may not feel like, as good as you did when you were 20 years old. But don't you dare count yourself out and say, I can't work for God anymore because of this and that and the other. You put your shoulder to the plow. Until you die, you keep working for God. You keep giving everything that you have to the kingdom of God. You, there's, there's days that you're not going to feel like coming to church. Now, where's my old people at? <laughs> I'm young, and there's days that if I could lay in the bed, I would lay in the bed. But there's a job that we've got to do. There's a community that we've got to reach. We don't have the time to lay around and just sit here and do nothing. We've got an obligation to God to work for him. And as we look at the world around us today, we see the condition that this world is in. We should be working harder now than we've ever been because I believe that we're, at the, we're on the brink of the rapture. And I've got family that I want to see go with me. I've got loved ones that I would love to know that their name's written in the Lamb's book of life. And my dear God, what are we, not just this church, but every church, what are we doing? Are we just wasting time? We've got to get out and work. Don't you dare let the enemy sit there and tell you just because you've got this problem and that problem that, that, you're, that you're old. Don't, don't let the enemy blow your light out. You keep working for God. You, you keep sowing the seeds. You see, Abraham was a hundred years old when Isaac was born. Now, obviously, hopefully nobody's in here a hundred years old praying for a child. You need a different kind of prayer then. But don't count yourself out. Just because you feel, just because you're the number of years you've been on this earth is getting higher. There's a work for every one of us to do. Young people, don't count yourself out just because you're a young person. Don't think that God can't use you just because you're young. God can use the young, the old, the middle, the in between. He wants to use every one of us. He's just looking for somebody that will give everything they have to him. But then their next excuse, they said, just send them away. They didn't want the responsibility of having to take care of them. And you see, that, that's the problem that's in the church today. We, we want new people to come into the church, but we want them to already be saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. A lot of times in churches now, we're, we're not ready. We don't want them to come in as a babe because you have to help take care of them. You, you have to sacrifice time. You, you have to give them the milk. You, you have to nurture them. You have to tend to them. You have to encourage them more often. And so many times in the church today, we, we just want them to come in and just be ready to go down there and teach this class and go and do that. And, you know, we, we want them to come in, just be ready to throw them in something and get them to work for God. But we need people that are willing to take responsibility, to mentor people, to, to encourage people. And finally, I would tell you tonight, what you have is enough. In verse number 16, Jesus said unto them, They need not depart. Give ye them 
to eat. You see, Jesus, he just spoke right up. Basically, he was looking at those disciples and he was saying, these people are right where they need to be. This is their appointed time to be here, their appointed place to be here. He said, and what you have is enough. But you see, what made the difference was when they, they took it to him. He, in verse number 18, he said, bring them hither to me. He didn't say, take it to this committee or that committee. Take it to this one or Billy Bob or Susie or anybody like that. He said, you give it to me. And Jesus blessed it and broke it. And that's what he wants to do for each one of us. He's wanting to take that, that little thing that we consider to be insignificant. He's wanting, if we'll give that to him, he's wanting to take it and bless it and break it so that it can minister to multitudes of people. You know, just, just simple things. It, it could be that, that maybe you need to sing a song. Maybe, you're, maybe your gift is teaching. I, I don't know. Maybe it's singing in the choir. But whatever your gift is, in my opinion, one of the greatest gifts that's often overlooked in the church is the prayer warrior. Everybody gives all the accolades to the preachers, the musicians, the singers, and you know they do great jobs. But in my opinion, the one that's the most important is the one that gets alone in the midnight hours with the burden for their church on their heart and says, God, I'm not going to allow my church to die. I'm not going to allow my church to get cold. I'm not going to, you know, somebody that will just get along with God and get, the, again, get a hold of the horns of the altar and stay until they know that God has heard their prayer. We need more of those in the house of God. But so many times we, we just want the, the fast food type of religion. Where we can just swing right through and get a hold of God and run right out the door. But God's looking for people that will take their time. And get a hold of him and say I'm not going to turn loose until I know that you've heard me. But Jesus told the people to sit down. He blessed the food. He broke it. He gave it to the, he gave the food back to the disciples. And the disciples fed the people. All because they used what they had. If you would, let's stand. Tonight, I'm just going to ask us collectively as a church to come up here to the altar if, if you're comfortable with it. I know some people still are concerned with COVID. So if, if you're comfortable, I'm just asking you to come up here. And I just want us to pray that God will begin to use what each one of us has. Sister Elizabeth, would you mind coming up here and just, just leading a prayer? Whatever, whatever God lays on your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray, church. Father, thank you so much for your word. Our hearts are warmed by the word of God. Thank you for this time that we have to meet here tonight. And Father, as we're exhorted and blessed by your word, the hearing of your holy word, O oh God, I pray that you cause our hearts to burn concerning, Lord, uh, the gifting and the calling upon our lives. Lord, that you have called for each and every one in this church to do, to be effective in the body, Heavenly Father, to be working in the body of Christ and to do what you've called us to do. You said that we have an unction from the Holy One, 
And I pray, Father, that you would help us to take hold of that that you've called us to do. And to believe you, God, and to move forward in the giftings of God. Oh, Lord, the giftings that you've placed within us, I pray for the Spirit of God to just move us, Lord. And see the need and hear the need around us, Heavenly Father. I thank you for Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for your love, your undying love. Hallelujah. For the church. And I pray, Father, help us in these last days. Oh, Lord, to have an ear that hears what the Spirit is saying unto the churches. Father, bless this church and help us even tonight as we go to our respective places, God, tonight. Let our hearts burn within us for what we've heard tonight, God. And let Christ be glorified in everything we do, I pray. Hallelujah. The church said, Amen. Yes, ma'am. I don't feel like I'm in the same body that I was in on Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. He has wonderfully touched me. I can move, I can get up and go, I'm not hurting, hallelujah, praise the Lord for healing. Amen. Praise God. Anybody else got a testimony? Now, Sister Elizabeth prayed, but anybody else have a um, special need you need prayer for? Let's pray for... Some of y'all will gather around Brother Fred. Let's pray for his grandchild. Praise God. All right. All hearts and minds clear. We will see you Sunday morning. Bless you.